Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, showing up for today's mastermind. I'm really happy to welcome you on behalf of JCI Poland. Uh, we have a great mix of experts, professionals from different fields, and um, we're lo really looking forward to finding uh, the answers to the question how to find the competitive advantage uh, in the current um, uh, market situation in the crisis, especially for SMEs, that is the small and medium businesses. So um, from my side, my name is Joanna. I'm the national president of JCI Poland and professionally I'm a business lawyer. I live in Poland, uh, typically in Warsaw. I do travel internationally, so I really um, love learning about the perspectives in different countries and different, different businesses to understand how I can help my clients as well. And I would like to welcome Kasia. Uh, Kasia, could you please shortly introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Joanna, for a short introduction. My name is Kasia. I'm a supply chain professional with 10 plus years experience in international supply chains uh, with the most focus on the food business. Um, I'm Polish, but currently living in Switzerland. I am passionate about supply chain and, uh, of course, also sustainable value chains and the implementation, how we can make the supply chains more competitive through sustainability. Um, so this is what I'm trying to do on my everyday daily business uh, with the company. Great, thank you. Um, next person is Wojtek. Could you please introduce yourself as well? Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Wojtek Pazdor. I'm talking uh, to you from, from Wroclaw in Poland. And I'm a founder of Active Strategy, consulting and training company. And for the last eight years, uh, actually few, one week ago, we had a, a eight birthday of the company. And uh, we work uh, in three areas. Generally, or mainly, we, we, we try, uh, help to develop um, uh, leadership and team management skills to IT companies and manufacturing companies. Uh, so we work uh, with both with local small companies and big international corporations like uh, Volkswagen, Siemens, Samsung, uh, Electrolux, Oracle, Akamai, uh, Allegro, and, and many others. And, and we help uh, mainly uh, to, to, to small companies, uh, small, small and medium companies, uh, build and create a company culture. And yeah, and we do it uh, mainly in Poland, uh, but both for local and international companies. Great, thank you very much for the intro. Um, Damian, could you please uh, shortly introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is Damian Rutajczak. Um, on a daily basis, I'm managing Sova Marketing, which is a marketing agency that is looking for special products that we would like to advertise in the United States. Um, our speciality is Kickstarter and crowdfunding in general. I'm a co-producer of the new upcoming medical TV series, No Second Chances. And uh, that is the marketing agency is something that allows me to pay my bills. However, what I'm doing, and it's the real passion of mine, is the application for medical students. It's called QP, and um, it's a database for medical students where they can practice their knowledge and prepare for exams. Um, and it's such a passion because the mission of the application is to lower the cost of medical education and um, help uh, medical professionals um, and bring more of them to the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Michal. Yeah. Last but not least, <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael, I'm 36. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Quality Minds. Um, Quality Minds is a um, company which uh, has the vision to deal with quality assurance in software. And software is nowadays all over the place. Uh, we started 2012 with a small group uh, here in Germany. Right now we are a little bit more than 200 people around Germany, Poland, and uh, first steps in the Netherlands uh, in different areas across different branches from banking, insurance, public sector, automotive, and so on. 
Um, what we also, well, like, why we are also maybe interesting is that we founded a company based on agile principles, which uh, means uh, lower or not so high hierarchy, which means more trust to the employees and so on. And which is also the reason why um, currently we um, have a very like good mood and uh, also based like on the fact that the IT sector right now is pretty sustainable and delivers more value, we can we can still grow. Uh, and uh, what is maybe more, I'm also coming from Poland, like several of you, and living in like, I think like from 2003 uh, already in Germany. And I'm a computer, computer scientist, uh, therefore, <laughs> also the passion for technology. Great, thank you very much for the introductions. Uh, so it would be very interesting to hear about a very specific example of IT industry uh, in the current uh, situation and the challenges that are faced basically in any field of business. And um, I'm really curious, uh, what is your experience in terms of um, the market development? Do you see it as a challenge or as an opportunity? And do you feel that you do something better than your competitors that, tell, that helps you uh, go in the right direction? Okay. Now it's like, it could be of course a very complex question because like, it depends on very various uh, terms. But um, maybe let's focus on two sides. One is the business model and one is the culture, uh, which both are important for, for like now these times which are currently in. Um, like for the business model in the IT, it depends what are you doing. If you are doing and you're more on the server service side, you're a service provider in, for example, consulting or soft engineering services or quality assurance services as we do, then you are strongly dependent on your customers. And uh, if you look at this part, in general, the IT area is a, in a very good state. Um, because of course, nowadays, all of you, all of us have to work remote. <laughs> all of us have to use IT systems, maybe also even more that we did. All of us have to have a stable internet connection. Uh, all of us have to have stable and so on and so on. Therefore, in general, the IT, like from our point of view, is still on a very stable basis. Uh, and then if you differentiate between service and products, in the service area, it depends. There are a lot of companies here in Germany, since uh, Germany is known for beer and for cars, um, which are in the automotive industry. And the automotive industry nowadays, of course, has to go a little bit on the brakes and all of those companies and which are depending on automotive and are in the service area, they have a problem. But it depends on how long it would take. Uh, all other areas, for example, for us, we have, we have chosen a strategy which is like, um, like if you're in the stock market, you wouldn't invest only in one <laughs> stock. And this is the same which we did already since the founding. We are, several of our customers are in the public sector. And especially for times like those which are currently in, it's a very good decision because those this sector, public sector, is not such depending on the on the on the economical impacts. Uh, we are also in insurance. We are also in healthcare, medical. We have also uh, founded uh, and um, coached several other companies which have been built. And within those areas, it's all stable. As as I mentioned, we are in the service uh, part uh, of the business. Uh, therefore, we are depending on those branches. But we have also founded some other companies in the product area. In the product area, it's, it's a, a kind of other like a way of thinking and business. And uh, this is still growing. Um, therefore, it depends. But this is the, only the business model part, which ensures that you have enough uh, income <laughs> and can perform, operate your business. The other part, which is, in my opinion, most more important even than that, is what is your culture? And if you have a company, you build your culture in a company where it's all like command and control, where nobody like has to think about what has to be done, <laughs> then you have a problem because several of also people which we also experience and see which are in this state have a problem right now because they need to know what to do. And if there are some single leaders, it doesn't work. We have the honor and uh, the possibility that we have a team of 200 people which are mainly self-organized and therefore we were able to like do stuff and react to, to the changes without having me <laughs> as the CEO to say, okay, this is what we will do right now. 
um, which is which we are lucky in, and totally totally honest with you. Well, that's uh, that has some really great insights. Um, so uh, on one side, um, you're saying that uh, the business model is very uh, important, so it would be uh, it would look differently in services versus products in IT. And on the other hand, you also say that. Uh, the, the leadership model or the culture of the company is actually also the key to success and giving more freedom to people actually helps you not to micromanage but to get the ownership of the products to, to the team. So um, I, uh, I would really uh, want to hear uh, Wojtek, uh, who is uh, the specialist in terms of leadership and um, uh, helping um, finding the good practices in businesses. Wojtek, could you please uh, share maybe the thoughts about the uh, efficient leadership um, based on your clients or your yeah. own experiences? How can one actually make the transparent structure uh, as a new thing in a company? Uh, coming from the model where there's some um, strong leadership and um, specific tasks delegated to people versus people actually taking the uh, control in the company? Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting question and interesting situation for, for everybody. Uh, uh, first, what I think is that um, right now, actually leadership you know, doesn't change. And my opinion is that um, actually right now, you have to use uh, like the same leadership skills, but you have to really be good in them, uh, in using them. So, because what people need right now, they need safety. They need to feel safe, like emotionally safe. Uh, because right now, um, I assume that it, it's worldwide. Right now, people have two fears. First, uh, health. Second, eco economy. Uh, first, they, f they, they just, you know, are afraid that they will get sick, you know, that they will get a uh, coronavirus. Uh, so company, companies do whatever they can to, to, to secure them. And, and the second fear is about uh, economy uh, of the country and uh, of uh, actually in the end, it's, uh, you know, they, they fear that they will lose job. Um, and leadership right now is about give giving them the, the basic emotional safety to not have to worry about those two things and, can, uh, and people then actually can focus on, on solving problems and creativity and innovation. And this is one, um, one mindset shift of, of, of mindset of leaders and, and people which can help us to lead uh, teams and companies is, that, is, is to understand that probably the you know recovery may not be like a quick bounce back uh, but we have to plan or we should plan for uh, at least uh, multiple months or, or quarters of lower income lower revenue and some consequences sometimes um, uh, it, some of your business as michael said some of your business or products um, uh, will actually you know earn more right now or grow faster right now but as generally as a, as a uh, country and as uh, Germany, Switzerland, Poland, Sweden and other countries uh, we will uh, have some problems and right now we have to prepare for marathon not for a, a short fast sprint mm -hmm. um, sprint run uh, and about leadership uh, uh, I think that we should you know it's it's easy to be a leader uh, when everything goes great, you know, when you have clients, projects, technology, people, office, all those benefits and everything goes smoothly. Uh, but right now it's a, you know, uh, a test for, for leaders and managers and, and companies. And uh, uh, this is a test, like we can compare it to bluff. Is it a, a word bluff in, in uh, poker? To, to bluff, right? Yes. And right now, actually, we can see and we will see which um, uh, which companies and and which leaders actually, you know, bluff. 
Um, because right now we, we will see um, who is really a good leader, who is le really a good employer. And remember that people will, will remember, and even if, if, if it will take some months, they will remember how you treat people, treat the people. And sure. the, the culture, as you, Michael, said, uh, culture and leadership is leadership culture, leadership style um, is, is really important because right now, if you will do it right, even because remember that some companies, we work in IT, but IT, it's like wide. And we have IT clients uh, who actually, you know, have right now layoffs. And we have uh, IT companies who hire people and have recruitment right now you can win and you can fight some problems and challenges if you will have motivated engaged dedicated people and to have that you cannot force them by fear maybe short term in short term right um, you can but uh, in the long term for a few months it's impossible um, so you have to be a good leader and you have to build uh, uh, an atmosphere to feel safe and to, to really uh, be like a, you know a committee as a, as a, in the company in a team. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, this is the challenge I think to to really keep people together and feel safe to 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 give them a, a environment to build the environment for innovation or creativity. Thank you very much for these thoughts. And this actually um, uh, has a very nice bridge with what Damian does. Um, and Damian, I would love to hear uh, some thoughts from you. Um, you're leading a team uh, that is very diverse uh, in terms of um, uh, skills of the team, uh, their age, uh, location, and um, uh, also you do have some um, IT people on your team. So do you identify with the challenges or the opportunities that Wojtek and Michal just explained? <laughs> like you said, um to be honest, I've been working remotely since four years now. So after quarantine time coming, I actually haven't noticed a big change in my life. So I remember us joking about it that some people call your daily lifestyle quarantine. time. So that's me, basically. Um, but jokes aside, um, I agree with both previous speakers, so um, I think that what Michael said, uh, we can refer to Stephen Covey and uh, his leadership style that he is explaining in his books. Basically, um, we need to give autonomy to our employees and we need to treat them as human beings. So they need to understand that they are not there just to perform tasks, but they are on equal level with you, or you could even be below them to support them as they perform. Um, so that would be uh, my approach. And with, with that approach in mind, I think we can convey this to what Wojciech said. Now when we have the crisis, all the employees that have been treated in the right way, in the way of autonomy, they now know what to do. Because all the time they had the responsibility on their shoulders, so now they clearly know how to behave, they just need your support, of course, but they are not mindless machines, right? They, they are human beings that they know how to respond to a problem. Um, even without a crisis, you know, it's quite a usual situation when uh, an employee is coming to you with a problem. They usually ask you only for a permission. They actually already know the solution. So the best is just to ask, like, what do you think about it? Like, how would you resolve this problem? They usually know the answer already and you don't need to look for it. Um, so they only need permission. Um, and now it's actually too late, but the companies that had this approach in mind all the time, I think they will go through the crisis quite smoothly. The other companies, they either learn fast or will go to serious, serious uh, drama. <laughs> I understand. Thank you for uh, for this point of view. And I would like to ask an open question to all of you um, in terms of a specific focus of IT companies um, that might uh, be successful or might actually need to 
restructure their business. Nihal said at the beginning that um, there is a difference between the services and the products. So uh, assuming that in many other countries, this could be a challenge. So if we do have a product that, that is a SaaS, so uh, software as a service, where uh, we need the developers to always update this uh, solution. We need clients who would be paying uh, for the monthly uh, licenses for use of the software. And um, the market is going down, so the cash flow might be going down. What would be your advice uh, to the leaders of those IT companies to help them survive in the uh, new market conditions? So maybe I can start um, because I, I have been actually referring to this uh, in my webinar. Um, what is very important for the company owners and managers is to understand that uh, they are the company, not the product. So the value they bring is the company and not the product itself. So, okay, they maybe created a great product, but they shouldn't assume that uh, they can sell it forever the rest of the days um, if they weren't diversifying uh, in the past um, you know it's now or never because they either uh, drown deep in the water or uh, they will find a quick way to rebrand their company and survive uh, so I would look for first of all I would start with finding a different approach to the same customer as we already have a product maybe we need to connect with the customer in, in a different way. Um, but if that's not possible, then I would look for a way to rebrand my company within my, um, my uh, budget, obviously. Mm -hmm. Niha, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, of course. Um, it's um, yeah, difficult to like, answer it in general, because of course it depends on several factors. I mean, like if this product company is not like totally new and totally founded only by investors or could be also a good case but <laughs> that they maybe also should uh, have uh, had a strategy in the past to have some money put it by side for times like those uh, but i totally agree with damian in the certain point independent if you have like investments which you have or if you have to, like put the money aside or not the only possibility is to do a, a pivot or and or to risk because like there is, I'm not sure who from who this quote comes, but uh, there is no option to take no risks as a as a company. You always have to. You always have to. If if you're nowadays independent, of, even if product or service, if you do the the turtle move and simply like block and only observe what is what is doing, then you're already dead. Therefore, in times like those, you have to invest. It's of course very hard. If you have like a grown-up product company with hundreds of developers all around the world um, to switch like from day one to day two to, to, to the other product, but there is always the possibility. And I feel like if you look also the history of great companies which have built products, then it's exactly the thing which Damien said. They, th th those companies are made of people which are intelligent enough <laughs> to do amazing stuff. And there is there are always possibilities and of course if it's not possible at all then there are other also like in, especially in germany governmental possibilities to uh to, to to get some additional funding to like to go this new way also to to develop new things uh, and recently many of employees of ours were in this uh, this awesome uh, hackathon um, um, planned and organized by the by the by the government there were like 40,000 participants with like 1500 new ideas and several of them which came also from people from different product companies uh, came to life and they're also investors already not only for the government but also from huge companies like Google and so on which are putting a, a huge speed on that what I mean like uh, long story short <laughs> There is only one way, and this is to risk and to the, do a pivot. Uh, if you if you have a strategy which is solely based on one customer or one product, then it's not not sustainable. Definitely not. It it sounds very easy. It's not easy. I know. I also experienced by myself, but it's the only way to go. 
That's a very uh, important tip. And um, you have mentioned a very important word, which is sustainability. And um, in this context... Can I, can I add one, one thing? Yes, of course. Uh, because um, I'm not an expert in, in products, but what I see and observe in, in uh, companies we work with is that uh, to build those products or change those products or change your services or, or do this, uh, this pivot, which you mentioned, um, you need people. And you need engaged people and creative people and people who uh, work like 150% and give you 150% uh, of their energy and creativity. And to do that, it, the, the communication is really important because right now people need to know uh, about condition of the company and they need to know the truth. If they will, they think that it, it's better than it's done, than, uh, like it really is, they will not, uh, probably, they will not find the motivation. And if they feel that it's worse than it, it is in reality, they will probably, they, they will fear um, mm -hmm. and, and they could be blocked. Mm -hmm. They have to know that you have the plan for that situation, that you have some strategies, you have some scenarios, and you have a control over the situation yeah. in the, on the level on, on which you actually can have the, the, the control, of course. Um, they should know that um, the people, what, what they need, it's especially what, what you mentioned, that we work remotely right now, most of us. And people need still, maybe even more, relationships. People need to have a, a small talk, a chit chat with each other. They need to have a contact with leader, with the boss or with the um, project manager. They need to have a, a, you know, a coffee or a drink with the, with, with the team. So, so it's like um, you, 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 have, you can think about many situations um, uh, and many opportunities to build re relationship, to motivate people, to inspire them. And one more thing which uh, I see many companies forget about is to secure uh, a key people and key roles in the company. Because imagine right now is, is a, a real risk that one of you or the founder or the key architect or someone from the company, a key people from the company tomorrow can uh, be in the hospital offline for a few weeks. And it could be a founder or CEO of the company. So right now, what I see is to, to be able to draw and to do a pivot, you, you, you can think about how to secure people or some processes and this decisiveness or, or a, a, um, a responsibility of those people uh, in the case of, yeah, um, a situation when tomorrow morning this guy or this girl will, uh, will be in the hospital. Of course, I, I don't wish you that. I hope. Everyone, everyone will go safely to that situation, but think about that and prepare yeah. for that because it's but, still okay. leadership. Yeah, yeah. It's strategic leadership. Maybe like two practical examples on that. Point one, uh, to give an example from the real life, uh, like as the whole pandemic uh, started, we sent all the people already several days before to, to that home office. And we did one thing. We sent with all the, uh, all the, uh, all the employees, and we said, guys, the worst case is well, all of our customers can't give us money. We can't give us projects and our projects are done. And then we calculated a number of months, which is for us, is like seven months, um, where we can still survive. And we gave this very transparently to all the employees. This is the worst case. No money comes in. We can survive seven, seven months. And this is like the, for transparency, what you said. And the second part for relationships we also, like Damian, several of us worked already remote since years uh, in the IT. It's like, it, it comes very often, but there are still possibilities. Like we have a Zoom call 24 hours open, which is kind of virtual kitchen. We have every Friday and after work beer. We have uh, whatever, yoga courses for all of us remote. We have uh, children playing with each other and drawing and so on and so on. And like, this is all about like, thinking about the panic mode and doing nothing versus doing something good out of that. And there, is, there are a lot of possibilities with technology. Uh, let me just add one sentence to that. that um, I also see a very common approach that should have been changed is 
when you have employees, and Pointer mentioned uh, people are very important and they have their needs that we should fulfill. Um, so the company owners, they often perceive people as an expense, whereas they see devices and you know other machines as an investment. So there is a needed a shift in thinking. People are an investment and machines not necessarily the pets, but people are definitely an investment, not an expense. Definitely. I, I hate people which say I have resources in my company and by saying that they mean people. It's like, no, no, resources are computers, cars, whatsoever, that not people. This is the, the typical thing which comes from enterprises because they always say they calculate in resources. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. that is a very good point. Sorry, one more, one more thing to, yes. to what Michal said. Uh, because maybe some of your companies uh, or some of you will have to take like really uh, difficult decisions like, you know, fire some people and, and uh, sometimes it, it's, there is no other way, you know. When I work with, uh, with managers or entrepreneurs, uh, the first right now, the first priority is to secure the health uh, and life of your people. Second is to secure your company to survive. And sometimes maybe some of you will need to, to make those decisions. And one, what I can recommend to, to do it fast, like not to postpone it too much. Of course, don't take uh, like the ha hasty decisions, but take it fast and implement it fast uh, because uh, the, the, the second priority is to, to secure the company. Of course, do it gently, do it with, do, do it with, with the empathy and care of your people, but maybe some of you will need to take those decisions. So, like, mm -hmm. don't, don't put people, don't think that, you know, you hurt people um, because sometimes you, you, you maybe have to, but do it like gently with empathy, with respect and all that, uh, all that things. Thank you very much. That's a, uh, that's a very good tip. And I would like to notice that um, in the uh, discussion about the leadership and uh, motivating the team, we actually have touched upon a number of aspects of which uh, um, are really interrelated and they all uh, go down to the notion of the sustainability in business. So uh, we have finances, we have the corporate uh, product portfolio or services portfolio. Um, uh, we have the aspect of the well-being of the team and uh, cooperation with the external partners. So all those aspects so far have proven to be the competitive advantage or disadvantage, as a matter of fact, if they're not uh, applied uh, in the right way. At the same time, in many businesses, uh, also outside of IT, we have uh, various other aspects that add up to uh, the notion of sustainability. And uh, Kasia, I'm really curious about your perspective because you are coming from a completely different field, uh, not based uh, on IT skill, skills, or although obviously you are using IT in your work, but uh, what are the aspects that you uh, are paying attention to and that can really translate into the competitive advantage of a business? Yes, um, I was really um, listening with great interest, um, all the speakers uh, before me because um, it's incredible uh, that we are coming from different businesses and different areas, but there is a really very clear link, uh, which I can also apply uh, in my area of work, what is supply chain, because uh, without good communication, without full respect, if it's your colleague at work, or if it's your employee, or it's your business partner, in the whole chain of, of, of uh, uh, the business um, included um, how be fast and efficient and not just, uh, let's say, uh, lead your processes uh, from one day to the other, but uh, how to secure um, the right, let's say, buffer to have the, to ensure the supplies through the chain for a longer time. Of course, this is, uh, Again, we uh, touched the um, perspective of, of financing, yeah, because uh, uh, looking from the um, 
let's say production company perspective, uh, you can't um, collect too much, let's say, finished goods uh, in your warehouses because then you're losing uh, the cash flow. So um, what we are, let's say, talking uh, till now, it's uh, a huge universal, um, let's say, knowledge which we can apply really in a really different aspects uh, of business. And I think the uh, current situation with the lockdowns in, uh, yeah, basically around the world shows that uh, how quick supply chain can be impacted. Because, um, let's say, uh, do the story very short, is let for many people, supply chain, uh, it's the same what is logistics. And uh, for many, let's say, not uh, people working in this field, uh, logistics is just moving something from A to B. And uh, if you have the borders closed in UI, so the whole chain broke uh, immediately. So um, I think in this time, uh, I think more impact uh, will be felt by really huge companies like free concerns, uh, which um, need to ensure all the supplies coming around really globally. Um, corona really shaped the world. And uh, I think this is a great moment, um, let's say, to review and rethink the business at itself. So we spoke also um, what it's sustainable. Um, sustainability is not just the environmental part. Sustainability means we are sustained because of the environment, we are sustained because of the profit and uh, the economy, and we are sustained of the social aspects. So I think um, the crisis or the, or the situation of, 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 of the corona uh, virus situation um, show us um, or force us to see even more um, how the sustainability in the different areas needs to be bring together and how to connect it and um, build on that, um, yeah, build the, 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 the advantage for the future. Because uh, maybe this corona is just one of the black swans, which let's say, who knows, maybe there will be another virus next year, maybe even this autumn. So how to prepare now uh, for the uncertain future? But maybe because the certain uncertainty can be the, let's say, new reality. So I think that this situation brings us uh, to the point that uh, it helps us to accelerate uh, the good practices uh, around really different uh, branches. So. Mm, speaking about real estate, I, I'm, I'm focused since years um, mainly to the food industry. So um, I have my uh, expertise in really big companies like Kraft Foods, which is really present around the world. I work also for uh, many years for Coca-Cola. Now I uh, do work for uh, the medium company. Uh, which shows me uh, how depends the different process on each other. So um, I think in situation like now that uh, the borders are closed and uh, on one hand you, you can't provide let's say many um, raw materials. Uh, so even if you have demand for your products, you can't produce because uh, you can't supply uh, your production. I think this and every single let's say, step of the process, you see how it's disrupted. Um, so why do not focus more now again on the locality? So we can make really again, like let's say a circle or like close the loop to um, how to bring more profit to our local societies, how to involve more our communities, um, how to be more thankful, let's say to the farmers, uh, in the next village to us, yeah. So um, it's not that, let's say, uh, say goodbye to the global, let's say, purchases, but how to incorporate also social enterprises in the globe into the global supply chains. Why to not to rethink um, all the requirements? Um, and here again, we have, let's say, this is a huge topic. It's the IT. A small producer can't afford perfect, let's say, um, softwares, ERP systems, uh, which uh, 
helps to validate uh, all the products that say on the whole life cycle. Um, but why do not help as a big, let's say, enterprise to help the, the, the local um, producers to incorporate them uh, easier to, uh, to the global supply chain? So um, I see here, Richard, and maybe I'm, I'm too positive <laughs> in, in this way because, uh, but I see really a huge chance to um, really improve uh, sustainability in, in different uh, aspects of our lives. So for sure, Asha, the aspects think, that you uh, mentioned are um, very uh, interconnected in terms of sustainability. Just to add one thing um, uh, with regards to the local markets or cooperation with local markets, um, we did have a meeting with uh, the farmers who are uh, in Poland. They are an association of farmers and um, they have noticed that they uh, actually have lost a number of distribution channels because the new supermarkets um, are actually buying uh, products from uh, their countries of origin rather than from the Polish um, the farmers. And this has created an imbalance in a way. Do you wanted to comment on what Kasia said? Yeah, actually, I wanted to ask mm -hmm. a, a question to you, Kasia. Yep. Uh, if you could uh, maybe share some ideas and how we can actually think and how we can start to work on sustainability. What do you mean, like a service company or production company? How to do it in, in service company, service mm -hmm. or product service, product company, uh, but IT product company. Yeah, like I think a good uh, framework to uh, work with uh, and check your, let's say, um, your service and what you're providing and how you work is uh, maybe quite obvious what I would say now about the SDGs. Like uh, if you look on the sustainable development goals, they are creating a great framework to check what I can do as a um, person as an individual or also like a, as an enterprise because um, as I mentioned before sustainability is also a lot of being like doing something for the well-being of a person so the well-being of the employers um, uh, if you look down uh, you, you can break it down and say okay uh, how for example I help my uh, own employees uh, to ensure the work-life balance, how we incorporate, for example, our families uh, into the daily work. Or, um, of course, you're in consulting business, so uh, I think um, you can also help through your work. You help the leadership and being transparent and uh, work with people and, and building the relations. Uh, so basically, you're providing sustainability to others. Just let me add that um, SDGs, so the Sustainable Development Goals developed by the United Nations, are a framework which uh, is a, a frequent reference for us. And um, most of projects realized by JCI um, actually have uh, SDGs in mind. So um, we aim at incorporating at least one um, SDG per project to solve a specific uh, issue in the community or in business. Nowadays, uh, obviously, um, our attention has shifted uh, into the sustainability of businesses, healthcare, uh, which are the uh, absolute priorities for everyone. And um, also, as the um, leaders of JCI, we do see that um, it is really our mission to make sure that they find solutions to uh, the environment, including a schooling system and all the other aspects of society and global community or global life uh, in general. So uh, in the current um, circumstances, we see um, business sustainability as the key component to actually going out of uh, the COVID crisis um, the, in a, a safe way. Obviously, we will all see the negative consequences. The crisis is inevitable, but we can find the solutions to um, go beyond the average and it would be um, really helpful for businesses in general to um, have a look at the good practices. And that's why we're talking about the competitive advantage because um, 
taking care of the finances of your company, uh, taking care of choosing the right sector of, um, of business is already the first step to surviving the crisis and maybe even doing well during the crisis. So that's from like the NGO and JCI perspective, but also uh, from a business lawyer perspective. Uh, I wanted to comment on what Kasia said and what you, Joanna, said. In my opinion, now the COVID situation will actually turn everyone, uh, everyone's attention towards uh, sustainability when it comes to managing businesses. For the recent years, at least, um, what everyone would care about were KPIs and companies would go in very, very high depths only for the KPIs, right? To, to meet the goals that they created for themselves. But it's so artificial. I think that now the crisis situation will make many companies understand that everything that they were doing was very artificial, I think is the word for it. So they were creating mad goals just to meet them. Um, it was, in a sense, purposeless. Whereas what matters really is sustainability and businesses are very important, but it's just so great that we can actually create a business and make not only profit, but also something good right, for, for everyone else uh, on, the, on the way. Um, so that was my comment. Sorry, I wanted to, to add something on what Damian said now, because uh, you need to have goals and you need to have some control tools. This is, of course, extremely important. But um, what was a bit, like, not that is unrealistic, but um, many times, many KPIs even um, started to, like, not really healthy um, competition between the teams, because uh, sometimes, or very often, at least in my experience in supply chain, that uh, the goals got uh, KPIs, which were, let's say, against each other, so you were, let's say, fighting against you then really working as a corporation uh, to achieve the common goal, uh, what should be the company's profitability. So not always was really, it was um, really clear uh, with or really supporting the strategy of the company. Uh, there are also really great tools uh, or models how to incorporate uh, uh, sustainability into the uh, business model. This is one thing. Another thing, there are also like analysis tools uh, where you can uh, check uh, unit of analysis. In this case, like if it's uh, a consulting company or really like IT or uh, really producing cheese, um, it, where you can have the possibility to check all the um, life cycle of your product, what you're offering, um, looking on that through the all stakeholders on every stage of the life cycle. And again, uh, let's say, put it through the filter of sustainability, so through the free bottom line. And then sometimes you can really uh, uh, landing with it that you will rewrite your value proposal because then maybe you can find uh, uncaptured value in this what you are doing right now. I have like virtual advice on the hand, <laughs> <laughs> which is by the way a good practice for now in working remote teams. Um, like, I'm going to give you a practical example how it can work. Uh, and all the things which you said, uh, totally right. Um, beginning by what Katja said, uh, it's like what we did, for example, we, last year, we talked a lot about the sustainability topic. The framework by the UN was also known to us. And then we asked ourselves, okay, how can we approach it? How can we do it? And so on. And then we took like the thing which Damian said, people mostly know what they can do. We took one day, it was the sustainability day, we took all of the, all of the employees together and let them like, prepare, did, prepare the day in, in a self-organized manner, work on those sustainability goals, topics, actions from those three categories, which, which you mentioned, which um, economical, ecological, and social aspects. And out of that came like, I think, like over a hundred different things, like backlog of which could be done. Of course, we cannot do all of this stuff, therefore we had to pri prioritize. And what we decided last year, on a very practical manner, to have a, have a team, which is the sustainability team. It's not that they are only working on the sustainability. Of course, they are also in other projects. But this is their so-called, in German, Herzblut, which is the, the point which drives them. And they are positioned in the company uh, in a way that, like, on the same level, it's, like, C-level for the sustainability topic. 
and sustainability is a permanent goal and also KPIs within the business strategy for every year and like every quarter we evaluate it and, and so on. And it works really well because then you have people which know what can be done and it, it works. I and mean, like it can be put it as, as, as you said in the, in the center of, of, your, of your business model. And I know companies, partners of us, which go even further. Like they totally put it, this topic into their portfolio, in their business offering and into their pitches whatsoever. It's like totally clear how they're contributing and how they business and also they evaluate. And I know IT is a, in a very special situation because like technology is all over the place. And if you have some IT background then you can do a lot and, and do a lot of added value, but they really are already picky about what kind of products do they build or what kind of projects do they start and how far they're related to the sustainability topics. It can go even up to, up to this point. And on a final notice, <laughs> like two days ago, I spoke with the, um, with the director of the so-called Potsdamer Institute for Klimaforschung, which is Potsdamer Institute for Climate Research, which as far as I know is the number one research uh, institute on this topic worldwide. And this, uh, this director said, uh, what we are doing right now with the COVID situation to have only one answer <laughs> for the situation to shut down all of the systems, like sociological, economical, and so on, it can't be the solution for the future because there will be several other crises, especially from the ecological point of view. And we have to learn how to build resili resilient systems. If we do the shutdown every time, then we are already, we can already stop to work and, and do stuff. Therefore, it's, it's not a nice to have, but like it's a must have, definitely. Thank you very much for that. That is a very, uh, very important note um, for summarizing the discussion. Um, being mindful of time, uh, no, we will be slowly wrapping up, but um, I would like to ask if any of you has many, maybe a final question or a final remark uh, in relation to our discussion so far. Damian? Um, yes, it came to my mind earlier. Um, now I have an opportunity to ask. So um, the question that came to my mind is, um, it's an open question. What do you guys think about um, the world that we will see after the crisis and uh, with an angle on the customers? I'm very interested. What do you think about the customer of the future? Also very, it depends. But like, of course, for this topic, uh, we, we currently are doing several market analysis. We are asking our customers. For us, we came up with the conclusion that First, uh, all the business models and our services, I can only speak for myself because I'm not into other domains. Um, definitely all of the customers said they want to switch to even more remote work and uh, services because they realized if they don't have that right now, that they have, they have really uh, a deadlock for seven. Therefore, remote work, definitely point one in several different aspects. Uh, point two, learning in different ways of learning is also a market which, which grows very fast. And now in the last three weeks, it grow exponentially uh, for that. And um, the third point was uh, like um, um, all of the things which we, for example, build, software we built, and as I said, this is only for our market. Um, the, the main route goes to cloud systems and to somehow distributed systems and not having local, which is also connected to the remote kind of way. But those three aspects like remote work and collaboration, uh, learning, and even more distributed cloud systems. This is for our area across those different market segments, the current uh, like thing which we have found up or came up with. Wojtek, how it's how it's your, on your side? Yeah, yeah, I think that, uh... Good ideas. Uh, I mean, good uh, impulse with those three, uh, three uh, possibilities. Um, but with really deep changes um, in in the behaviors of, of of all of us, actually, think um, about it as a new normality. <laughs> it, it will be something. I, I see that like it, it, we will have a new normal, a new normal for, for for almost everything. And what we hear from customers, our clients, and, and companies, and our business partners is that. 
we will probably have some up and downs. And we will experiment with, with new uh, solutions, with new behaviors, and we will come back to something which we used. And for example, imagine uh, uh, in, in one month or a few weeks, many companies, many people, uh, when we will be allowed to do that, we'll, we will want to go to the office again and work with people. And imagine the first day or second day, your colleague will, will have a fever or will cough and you will immediately think about like, yeah, maybe I will go, from, uh, go to, my, uh, to my flat, to my home and I will work from there for the next two weeks. So we will have probably like ex a lot of experiments uh, of for everything, almost everything. Um, so yeah, new, new normality for me, it's something we, which, we have, uh, which we need to um, uh, find, actually, discover. Thank you. Kasia, maybe yeah. some additional remarks. Yes, like, you know, looking from the perspective of the food uh, industry um, and what was, uh, disappeared as first uh, from the shelves in the supermarkets, I think the future customer will be less demanding. <laughs> But um, <laughs> putting the jokes on the side, um, I think um, uh, this buying decision in the food sector will change a bit uh, because um, I think it's, uh, at, at least this is, this is my opinion, that maybe we'll have the chance to get more back to the roots and think more what I'm eating, what should I buy, should I buy so much, because this is also the consequence of the uh, uh, huge uh, shopping uh, in the last weeks that uh, many people shop too much. So we have the problem now of the food waste on the other side, because they, after two weeks, uh, they needed to uh, remove what they bought uh, weeks ago. Um, so uh, again, I'm quite positive that maybe we will, as human beings, look more what we are eating, how we should uh, nutrition ourselves on more healthier and sustainable way and uh, I think there will be also a huge impact to let's say the uh, structure of future supermarkets and the retail chains because um, nobody says that it was the first lockdown or the first virus or the first problem what we will face in the future so I think um, looking for the next month uh, I see here um, huge changes coming for the retail and uh, food producers um, branch. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for those uh, very interesting uh, comments. Uh, it has been a very passionate discussion and uh, uh, I really loved all your insights and I will uh, obviously be very happy to go back to all those thoughts and uh, I encourage the conversation also outside of this call. Um, maybe uh, there would be even more ideas of how to uh, build sustainable businesses and that is just the beginning of further conversation. I truly do hope so. So with that, I would like to really thank you for this uh, call and I look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you, Joanna, thank you. for a good thing. Thanks. Thanks. Stay so healthy. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.